Good afternoon and welcome to lecture 17 of Math 1B03. So in today's lecture, what we're going to do is look at section 3.2 of the textbook on properties of the determinants. So our last lecture introduced what a determinant was. And in today's lecture, what we want to do is focus on how row operations change the determinant. And one of our other goals is to relate the determinant to the inverse. Okay. So before we go much further, just let me kind of give you the setup before we get into the fine details. Okay, so from the last lecture, we actually learned a very interesting fact, which is that if A is a square triangular matrix, then the determinant is just simply equal to the product of the diagonal entries. So that means that if we ever have a triangular matrix, it's very easy to compute the determinant. For example, here is a triangular matrix, and the determinant is simply 2 times 5 times minus 3. Okay, so that gives me minus 30. So there we go. That gives us a very simple matrix. And kind of what we want to, you might want to think is, well, hey, this is great. This suggests an easy way to compute the determinant of my matrix A. In particular, what you might be thinking is, that you can use row operations to put your matrix A into a triangular form and then compute the determinant, right? So in particular, put A into echelon form, which is upper triangular. Right? And so then we could make use of the above result. But there's a big, 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 big problem with this approach, which is when you're putting your matrix into echelon form, you're using row operations, and row operations can change the determinant. So row operations can change the determinant. So that's kind of the point of today's lecture, is how do these row operations change the determinant? And can we keep track of what happens to the determinant as we do those row operations? OK, let's make me disappear here. Hopefully, I've disappeared. And that gives us a little bit more room on the screen to write things. So first, let me justify this, that row operations can change the determinant. Here, I have two two by two matrices. They're very easy to compute the determinant. Over here, I get. 1 times 4 minus 2 times 3, which is equal to minus 2 on this side. But on this side, the determinant is 3 times 2 minus 1 times 4, which gives me 2. So the two different two matrices, even though they look the same, I'm just swapping rows, give me two different answers for the determinant. Now, luckily, we can control how the row operations did it affect the determinant as we're doing our computations. So that's what the next theorem does. It nicely summarizes what, are, what happens at each stage. So you have to, of course, start with the square matrix. And we're going to run through each of the three row operations. So one of the row operations you can do is by taking a multiple of one row and adding it to another row to form your matrix B. So suppose that you do that. And how does the determinant change? Well, if you do this operation, nothing changes. The determinant stays the same. Okay. The second row operation that you may use is swapping of rows. So if two A's, two rows of A, A are swapped to form the matrix B, then how does the determinant change? Well, it's the negative of the determinant of the original matrix. And that's actually what we saw in this example right here. These two numbers are the same up to a sign. And then the last row operation that you can do is you can multiply a row by a constant. So if you multiply the row A by the constant K to form the matrix B, then the determinant of A is now going to be K times the determinant of A. So we now can make use of these rules in order to use this strategy that, that was suggested at the beginning, put things into echelon form, but we have to keep a track of this information as we're going along. So in particular, we have to keep track of whether we're using swapping, and we have to keep track if we're multiplying rows by a constant. 
So here's a matrix, and I'll let, let we'll take a short break here. But as part of the break, you can sit down and see if you can use the rules to compute the determinant of this matrix. I'll see you after the break.